Greetings, my name is Ryan Nix. I'm a Principal Solutions Architect with Amazon Web Services and today I would like to talk to you about the IBM DB2 family on AWS. Now, first question I'm probably going to get is, what is DB2? So IBM's DB2 is a relational database product that has been around for many years. Many of the customers I work with have a existing deep investment into DB2 as a relational database platform. They're using it in on-premises context. It might be running on physical servers, might be on a virtualization stack. It could even be running on a mainframe implementation. And as those customers migrate workloads to AWS, one of the questions I get is, how do I bring my existing IBM DB2 investment from on-premises to AWS? And you know, what are my options around that? Very few customers just have a relational database. Uh, that relational database typically captures transactional information and over time there's a requirement to move that into a, uh, a longer term sort of platform where I can do analytics, where I can do um, sort of data warehousing. So we typically have a, a customer needing a relational component and then, a, or a transactional component and then an analytical component as well. To that effect, I want to draw your attention to two products, and the first is IBM's DB2 Pure Scale. Now, Pure Scale is simply another implementation of DB2, so it is IBM's DB2 relational database, but under the hood, what we've done is we have deployed that into a clustered compute configuration. So this will sit on top of multiple AWS EC2 instances in a highly available, highly resilient, high performance architecture. It is a clustered solution. And when we deploy it, we build it out into AWS placement groups. Now, Placement groups is simply a construct that says when I deploy EC2 instances, I provision those EC2 instances physically as close to each other as I can. So they'll sit in the exact same availability zone, they'll exist in the same AWS data center. Uh, very common if they're deployed at the exact same time, they will exist on the same physical AWS rack. So the virtual machines, the underlying physical hosts, are as close to each other as possible, and that way we can get a, a better performance when it comes to latencies, data transfer, and, and there are, of course, some considerations around that. Uh, the underlying storage is facilitated by IBM's uh, Spectrum Scale product, and this facilitates a GPF storage system, so a shared storage model for that clustered implementation. So when you're deploying DB2, you're getting a relational database, but with pure scale, you're getting an implementation of DB2 that is really focused around high performance compute. So this is a HPC focused implementation of the DB2 product. And then of course, we then have DB2 warehouse and this is typically a uh, large analytical data warehouse platform that is going to coincide with uh, uh, long-term data storage and analytics. And if you've existed in the database world for some time, this gets us to the point of all your data is in the wrong place and in the wrong configuration, so I guess we need some sort of ETL. So we will have a extract transform and load product and in the case here we will typically see data stage coming into the picture and what data stage does is connect to all of these different data sources and help me move information around or do the transformations as required and it's really not uncommon for me to see a customer that has a variety of these. They'll have a DB2 in combination with DB2 Warehouse or they'll have data stage as well. So when we take these existing investments and we bring them to AWS, what options do customers have? Well, I've got quite a few. So for one thing, 
all of IBM software licenses can be run on AWS. You can take your existing licensing structure that you're using on premises and you can deploy that workload on AWS. So we have a uh, bring your own license option where a customer can take their existing licensing investments, run them on top of AWS. And this exists for DB2, uh, it exists for Pure Scale, it exists for DB2 Warehouse, and it also exists for data stage so you do have that option to bring your existing licenses across typically that can be fulfilled via a manual deploy process so if you are manually installing that software on top of your virtualization stack or on top of your physical tin on premises you can repeat that process on top of ec2 uh, not the most pleasant journey but that option does exist so we have that that manual deploy for all of these byol options now in the case of existing licensing we do have to beg the question what is my on-premises infrastructure running on what is that licensing scheme uh, ibm has the option to license software based on physical CPU cores, uh, physical sockets, and then they also have a licensing structure which uh, moves in the direction for virtualized workloads, so where the uh, licensing is not done for sockets, but something that is closer to the virtual CPU construct that matches up rather nicely to AWS. And then the newer IBM products have a licensing scheme that is built around containerized solutions such as running the IBM software on top of uh, Red Hat's OpenShift. So one of the things that we do need to take into account is the existing licensing structure. Is that for a physical server implementation or is that for a newer version of the product that is licensed for a container workload? So you'll see in all of these BYOL options, we have a server and a container-based option. So likewise, uh, PureScale having a server-based um, based option, we've got a container workload, and we've got a container option over here. So server-based model is literally a direct transfer. I'm going to take my licensing as it is on my physical server on premises, deploy it on top of a EC2 instance, and then continue to use that. If it is a container-based uh, licensing model that I'm using on premises, I can bring that across to AWS and run that on top of Red Hat OpenShift on top of AWS. And in some cases, I can even take that containerized licensed model and bring it across to managed OpenShift, something like a Red Hat OpenShift service on AWS or ROSA. Uh, where it becomes a little bit interesting is if I have a customer who is running the server-based licensing model on premises and there is a desire to adopt a newer version of that product, and then they may find that the latest version of that product is only supported on the container option. And then it's a case of, I'm going to take my software, deploy it on its latest version on the container option, and then I might need to work with IBM to adjust my licensing model. So uh, if the server-based licensing is coming to end of life relatively soon, I would renew that licensing and uh, adopt the newer container-based licensing model. Now what's really fantastic about the container-based licensing models is that they are able to be procured directly from AWS or the customer can go to IBM. So what you can do is you can get that container-based workload. So in case of DB2, in the case of DB2 Warehouse, and in the case of uh, Data Stage, these are all available on AWS Marketplace. So customers can go directly to AWS Marketplace, subscribe to that product, and then they end up in a, a subscription for that product through AWS. This becomes a, 
uh, an additional line item on their AWS billing over here. Uh, in, with the marketplace offerings, you again have the benefit of you don't have to manually craft your snowflake. You have a deployment mechanism that's typically backed by a infrastructure as code template, which will then build out all of the underlying AWS resources, deploy the product. Um, if it is a containerized version, it's going to deploy OpenShift on top of uh, AWS EC2 and then manage that application workload on top of that, these all being self-managed options. In some cases, there are managed options uh, where IBM, for example, will deploy the workload into an AWS account that they control and manage that on behalf of the customer. Uh, and DB2 does have a managed offer there for customers to take advantage of. Uh, what we will likely see in the future is uh, managed offerings or SaaS offerings coming to AWS in the future for the broader portfolio. Now, many of the customers that I work with uh, that are exploring the newer versions of this are also combining that with other IBM software stacks. So we do see the DB2 family being a building block for larger IBM product combinations. And I want to draw your attention to the IBM Cloud Pack for data. Now, IBM Cloud Pack for data is a collection of IBM products. Uh, it's got Watson AI typically in there. It's got a variety of add-on packages. And then we've got uh, DB2, potentially DB2 warehouse, as well as data stage. And these are listed as add-on services, uh, which ultimately will be deployed on top of Red Hat OpenShift. So when you are Deploying your IBM uh, Cloud Pack for Data, what you'll have is a installer that's backed by Terraform. You'll find in that Terraform module, you have the ability to define which are the add-on components or which are the building blocks of IBM Cloud Pack for Data that you are going to deploy, that you have to license. And you can literally go and select there, yes, I have a requirement for DB2, yes, I've got a requirement for a data warehouse, I've got data stage in there. And the installer will actually go and provision your OpenShift implementation as well as build out all of these IBM products uh, onto AWS. With the cloud packs, some of the cloud packs are available on managed OpenShift, so ROSA, so do be aware that you can take advantage of either self-managed OpenShift or uh, a managed OpenShift implementation. Some of the IBM solutions will automatically trigger something like a data, a DB2. In other cases, it's an optional add-in. But do be aware that if you are a customer or if you're engaging with a customer that has an existing DB2 investment, you have the ability to bring all of those DB2 products to AWS and you can use them with either your existing licensing, so if you're bringing it from a serve-based model, deploy it onto a serve-based implementation on AWS, or you can work with AWS and IBM to take your existing server-based licensing and update that to a container-based offering and run it on top of OpenShift and AWS. And there are many ways to deploy, purchase, and buy. It's a flexible option, so absolutely reach out and, and we will guide you through that process. I hope this gives you a bit of a glimpse of what the DB2 family is and some of the options that are available on AWS. And thank you for joining me.